Ragnarok is coming. Today, I'm sitting down with Mila Pavlin, lead UX designer from Sony Santa Monica, to find out, is this potentially the most accessible God of War ever? Let's find out. Mila, thank you so much for uh, for joining me. This has been a long time coming um, because we've been friends for a couple years now. Uh, but it's like the first, it's, it's about time that we're able to get you uh, 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 onto some content uh, together. So uh, thank you for for joining me. And uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, what you do at Sony Santa Monica? Well, thanks, Steve. I'm really excited to be here. I'm Mila Pavlin. I'm the lead UX designer here on God of War Ragnarok at Sony Santa Monica Studio. And uh, I'm an advocate for accessibility internally in the game industry. I've been you know, working with, uh, with folks around the accessibility stuff for a number of years, working on everything from hardware to, uh, to software, educational you know, uh, products, mobile games, and then now working on AAA. So I think that this has been a, a, a great opportunity to get to know you. I know we've had uh, some opportunities to talk in depth about accessibility, and I'm really excited to talk to you today about the most accessible God of War ever. And that is the key to this whole thing is that this is definitely the most accessible God of War uh, ever because I've I, so I have played a few uh, a little bit of it, uh, obviously, for this preview. So I can uh, definitely uh, like I'm going to save my my specific impressions for my review, which will be coming out on November 3rd on this channel. So make sure if you're watching this, make sure you subscribe and stay tuned. But uh, Mila, I kind of want to ask you in regards to the journey to get to the most accessible God of War ever uh, in that. I want to be able to find out because we started chatting. I think I remember in 2018, shortly after uh, God of War, the the, the original uh, kind of had come out. Um, so can you tell us a little bit about what was it like kind of like starting at that point um, shortly after the game? The game has been released. It's been widely like highly uh, critiqued and, and criticized as one of the best God of War games uh, and even some of the, the best PlayStation games uh, of, of all time. Um, so what was it like kind of like starting out and wanting to be able to inc like include accessibility into what eventually is now God of War Ragnarok? Well, I think that you'll remember that, that as 2018 released, we understood that there were some major holes in our uh, way that we were developing for accessibility. And we did a post-mortem, which we you know, published on our website. And I believe that that's when we began speaking at that point was, hey, how do we take this game, which is critically acclaimed, and make it something that is going to be accessible to more people? And so it really started with the people with people from the accessibility community, with players, uh, you know, bringing in uh, folks like yourself to give us advice and say, how do we uh, take this thing and make it something that, that people can actually play and enjoy? Um, so that was the real key is that we're, we take to heart that statement of never without us or uh, never about us without us. Right, to make sure that we are uh, connecting with the community, bringing in players, and developing that kind of core fundamental uh, feature list uh, from the very beginning. So. Yeah, I absolutely love it. And, and obviously what an amazing journey it is. It has come to, uh, to So I want to kind of ask uh, kind of a little bit more specific. We know that this is obviously, uh, a, a, I guess, has a ton of accessibility features, just what's been already announced and uh, what is currently in the in the final version of the uh, of the game. Um, so I wanted to ask, like, because uh, is this the uh, essentially a mo obviously like an upgraded version of the original kind of God of War engine? And what did it take to be able to try to be able to take that engine? and, and uh, make, make it accessible. And if you have any examples of some fun stories that happen along the way, uh, feel free. Well, uh, I can start with some of the core, you know, things when we talk about the engine or like the the technology behind um, behind the accessibility features. There are certain things that we had to build from the ground up and rebuild, uh, you know, our whole control system, for example, in order to make sure that we could remap all the controls. We had to basically tear apart all of our kind of fundamental underworkings and say, how do we make everything based on something that's remappable? So our engineering team spent a ton of time, you know, working through the system, making sure that everything was mapped correctly rather than hard coded button presses. Because the worst thing in a game is you, you try to remap something and then it's like, oh, that didn't remap. Right. So we wanted to make sure that that was all fundamentally uh, you know, put together from the ground up. Those are things that we can get from the start. 
text scaling, for example, uh, making sure that we could have large text on the screen, that was a fundamental shift in our design process. We actually had to rethink our design from the, the from the very start, scrap everything we were doing, start over and say, hey, okay, how are we gonna make this fit? Because we had tons of text on the screen and all of it was super tiny. I mean, it was so small. I like, remember reviewing it. It was it was definitely one of my ma main complaints uh, at the time was that it was just a little bit small text. <laughs> yeah, it was tiny. I think we were somewhere around like 12, 14 point at some at certain points in the game. <laughs> and so we just put a, like a flat thing across the board and said, we will never go below a certain text size. Uh, we'll make sure that every single piece of text in the game has some kind of scaling option. Um, and we really designed the technology around that so that now it could scale, it could scroll. And this is just the text system. So we haven't even gotten into like all of the fun stuff. You know, we're just talking about the UI, but uh, you know, even scaling in you know, icons and games, making sure the health bars can scale, uh, and then adding in all the contrast backings for for the UI elements so that you can see the backing, you know, you can see the elements on snow, which of course, you know, you probably experienced yourself, right? <laughs> Get that high contrast going. But it has just been a tremendous journey as we go through because every time we uh, we go through and we find something small, we're like, okay, we could make this better. And so we're taking that to heart. The don't be sorry, be better. Uh, you know, make that that uh, that whole experience more accessible everywhere we can go. And yes, we have room to grow as well. So I, I'm looking forward to, uh, even though we are, we're putting out this most accessible God of War ever, how can we make this better? How can we connect more with the community and make sure that we're doing the right things? Yeah, and I will say just from uh, from my own uh, playthrough, the just just the the ability to go to the extra extra large text alone is is such a like a, a like it like it just makes already for me personally the uh, way better experience than than God of War originally. And I played the, the through the whole thing originally when it, like when I played, I absolutely loved it. Um, so seeing that in there and just like and not having to uh, worry about any small text throughout the entire game, like it was just like. Like, ah, it was such a, a nice like a, a sigh of relief. Um, but I did want to actually ask because like obviously there's a lot of inspirations from um, obviously with, with uh, there's a bit of stuff like from the uh, from the Last of Us. There's also even stuff from I can I see even seen from like Insomniac when it comes to like even the uh, the the ability to be able to customize the high contrast mode that's there. Um, what were some of the learnings that you had found when when working with other PlayStation Studios um, and any inspirations that you had when you were basically like trying to be able to make this uh make this game well the awesome thing about you know, working at, at playstation and the you know, the connection with uh, these studios that have done these really accessible games you look at the last of us part two that was groundbreaking this game came out of nowhere but we were actually about halfway through our production when that game launched so we had this this groundwork that we had already laid in because we had started day one in accessibility and when we saw the things that came out we were like oh yeah we could probably do that you know i think that there were a couple of features in there for example like the high contrast mode that um well a were directly inspired by one of your videos thank you very much for Aww, talking about that. but uh you know we 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 talked about this idea of um like how can we do this in our engine and make it uh, our own because you know everyone is doing these features in their own way to to fit within the universe and so you know we were able to take inspiration but then adapt it into the the style so it fits our own world, it fits our own uh, you know way of of going through everything. And I think that that was the important thing is that we're sharing this information across studios. We're sharing it with the general public. We're making sure that um, you know that everyone has access to this information because when it comes to accessibility, you know even though it may seem like hey different studios are racing against each other to get the you know the most features in or you know the most accessible game, ultimately it's the player who wins, not us right like the player is the one that's going to get to play the game experience it in the way that's going to make it you know them comfortable make them able to uh to go through the game and experience that epic story you know so that they too can go along with kratos and atreus on this uh you know this story of fate and prophecy and are they gonna are they gonna follow into their fate are they gonna you know what's gonna happen to them what's happening with ragnarok you know that stuff should be what's important and that the accessibility is just an ends to you know a means to the end uh, it's going to give you the tools that you need to complete the journey rather than being the focus of the game 
I will say, yeah, from from what I've been able to to play so far, uh, I, I like that's that's when it like accessibility can kind of do its best work when it just kind of like removes uh, a, a, as many barriers as it can um, and just lets you get engrossed into the into the story of uh, of this game. And that's and that's the thing with like as this is a very story driven game, um, that's super important. And and actually, there was even a moment where I completely forgot that I was like playing a game, and I just thought like I was kind of like playing like a cinematic experience. And so, uh, like it was, it was just really cool uh, for uh, just for that alone. Um, and and kind of actually, so I wanted to ask uh, in regards to just kind of the, obviously with the um, well, obviously with the inspiration of The Last of Us and 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 being a more uh, a, a fully blind ex, uh, accessible experience um, with this with this game because like I think the difference between the two is obviously that. Last of Us is very linear. It's a very golden path type uh, type game, uh, and it just it like it, it with some sort of variations of you can kind of go off into some side stuff. But with with God of War, it kind of has a sort of semi open world aspect to it. Um, so how uh, how did you come about uh, trying to be able to tackle um, like navigational assistance or just how to be able to make a, a, like a semi open world more accessible to to blind players? You know, I think that the, what you're touching on is really important to understand as we look for, compare and contrast to, to games like The Last of Us Part Two and uh, and God of War Ragnarok, because we have, um, you know, we have nine realms that we that we need to explore, and we have you know wide open areas where players can uh, can experience content that um, you know are very different from a linear experience. So if you're if you're doing just a linear experience, navigation assist um, can be you know very easy to do. I mean, not it's not easy. It, you know, it's definitely sure. hard work and it takes a lot of effort but it um but it's very straightforward and the progression is move to this spot progress past the spot move to next spot when you look at a more um a content that's going to be uh, player selected or player choice all of a sudden you have to start thinking how do we understand the intent of the player how do we know what they want to do so of course you have that underlying golden path right that underlying story progression which I think is the most similar in the, the the linear aspect of like if you just want to play the story and you don't want to do any of the side content you can just follow that 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 story path as soon as we start getting into things like hey you want to do a side quest you want to do a favor for somebody being able to select that and run navigation assist off of that particular quest was a really interesting challenge of how do we understand when a player wants to do that, you know, when they're, um, you know, when they want to go and do these side things. So we began to develop a layered system where we understand, like, hey, if a player is selecting and tracking a quest, then we're going to prioritize that as their primary, uh, their primary goal, and that's going to let them, you know, decide, hey, I want to go off to this area over here. I want to, you know, check this out. Maybe I'm going to track myself to this particular uh, gate or this particular um, uh, you know, marker on the map. And you know, that's going to allow me to, to go to that particular section and you know, find my way. And that navigation assistance, a lot of it was um, you know, very bespoke in you know, some of the puzzle areas. But we really made sure that we were using the core system of the compass, which already was doing the guiding. So when you look at 2018, we had this compass at the top of the screen. And the whole time, it's pointing you in the right direction to where you need to go. So we thought, hey, how can we just take that existing system that we're already working on and just start turning the player towards that camera? So adding in the ability to either do a button press or a swipe to orient your camera towards that objective, I think was um, it was a really interesting moment in our game development because we went from this idea of like, how are we possibly going to do this feature to having a prototype within a day and being able to navigate through most of the game uh, you know, with that, you know, kind of pure uh, navigation system of just saying, hey, whatever the wherever the compass is pointing, we're just going to take you in that direction. Um, it was some of those layered things that other 30% was, you know, some of those like, how do we understand intent? How do we make sure that a player is able to make the choices that they want to and, uh, you know, get through the content in a way that they really feel is going to be uh, successful for themselves? I love that. Um, and so I, I actually wanted to uh, to ask as, uh, as well, um, obviously, like so I, like for for those who are watching the for the context there, is, uh, I'm, I'm recording this uh, obviously just before the, the preview embargo uh, on October 21st. But um, there is going to be a, a, a patch with a little bit of a few accessibility updates. So I've yet to kind of uh, see what's going to be in there. But I want to ask, uh, Mila, is there any um, accessibility updates that'll be uh, that'll be popping up on uh, like either just post 
post launch or anything that you're kind of still currently working on that uh, uh, you're hoping to be able to improve so that uh, people players can be able to know. Okay, if it's not the exact experience on day one, is that is there going to be more uh, more to come? Well, of course, we are always taking community feedback. Uh, you know, looking at the things that players are are struggling with or, or the players enjoy, making sure that we're bringing that back into our our development. So, you know, the whole the whole philosophy at Santa Monica is that we want this to be a jumping off point for us. We want this to be, you know, a an effort to push forward and to make sure that we're connecting with the community. So we're all about getting community feedback, making sure that we're integrating that into our designs and having these features um, become a legacy for us so that we're making sure that these things are not just some bespoke thing that we've done for one game, but that they are part of our core engine and that they are part of something that we do. So every piece of feedback from the community is valuable and it helps us to build that better. You know, that making sure that we're fixing bugs or patching for the, for day one, of course, is, is something that's very important to us. Um, and, you know, if we have anything that we that we find that we need to fix, you know, of course, uh, I think Santa Monica is dedicated to making sure that we're putting out the best, uh, you know, the best, best foot forward for accessibility that we can. But we also understand that we are, you know, we ourselves are, are human and we are learning all the time. So there may be things that uh, that we need to improve or we need to step forward, just like the last time, I'm sure we were going to do a postmortem, you know, understand kind of where we can improve, you know, where we did, where we could, uh, you know, do better. And I think that that's what's really important is that we're not seeing this as a be all end all of accessibility, but this is, this is a step forward. I mean, this is the most accessible God of War, uh, God of War ever. But the next one, you know, or, or the next one, or the next one, or the next one, like whatever comes further, right, down the road should be also, um, you know, more accessible. So uh, whatever that might be. Very cool. So before I let you go, I want to ask, uh, is there any particular accessibility feature or just a, a setting in general that you're like, uh, like maybe either as a, like as a tease or like an Easter egg or something that you're like, you know what, you should probably like if you should probably look out for or or try uh, and, and see, see with, uh, if it works for you. Is there anything like that that you're kind of like super, super excited for people to, to, to try out? You know, I think that one of the things that I'm really the most excited about when we look at like the content is this um, the recenter on attack, um, you know, the um, improvements that we've done. So we really took that initial system where um, when you look at 2018, we had this recenter on attack where when you hit an enemy, you would kind of stick to them and rotate with them so that you could keep the, the enemy in frame. And what we found when we were doing playtesting was that, you know, if you had trouble seeing enemies that sometimes you would swing, you just completely miss them and we wouldn't get that re reorientation. So we started adding in this uh, this feature, this reorient that when you swing, you just start to orient towards your enemies. And in that, I would it, it made the point where I could actually turn off lock on and I could just play the game and feel very free. Hmm. Um, and that um, that experience of playing without lock on, just using the recenter priority uh, system, that really freed up my gameplay. And so as a player, I started really enjoying this. I combined that with the the auto pickup. So that, you know, in the middle of the fight, I don't have to think about like, okay, am I close enough to hit the button for that health crystal? I just walk over the health crystal, boom, pick it up, right? Get that. And along with the uh, the traversal assistance, when you're, in, when you're in an arena that has like multiple levels and you're just run towards a wall and just automatically hop up it, like that's the kind of thing that just feels really fun and frenetic and it has that really kind of engaging uh, system of combat. So I think that the tools that we give you in the combat system are so unique and so fun that I think people are going to enjoy them regardless of their background, regardless of, you know, whether or not they have a particular accessibility concern, um, you know, and I think that for the folks in the accessibility community, that they're going to find that these things take away some of that pressure around the things that you don't really need to think about during a combat, like, you know, figuring out which button to press to get up a wall shouldn't be your main defining difficulty of the game, right? It should be about like, hey, I'm going to fight this awesome boss, right? <laughs> like that should be what we were worried about, right? 
Yeah, actually, you know, I it's interesting because you mentioned the, the resetter uh, uh, on Target. Like I, so I had that on, but then I also had lock on uh, turned on as well. I think I might try turning off lock on because because I want to be able to, to to test it out. I had not thought about about using it in that particular way. So uh, yeah. and and by the way, y'all for watching that auto pickup saved my butt in this one big <laughs> kind of fight near the beginning that I'm just like, oh, this is so great. I'm, I'm so glad for this right now. <laughs> Um, so oh. yeah, I absolutely love it. Oh, this is so great. <laughs> we we had a we had a particular tester who was who was playing, and we were you know we're all rooting for that for this particular tester, and you know they were like almost dead in a particular fight, and uh, they just took one step backwards and stepped over a health crystal, and it just saved them right at the perfect time. We were like yes this is it this is the feature right that that literally we, was me that literally like, yeah. not, not not in the sense i was not the tester but i was like that bled that happened to me i was like i was literally <laughs> almost dead and i basically backed up and i picked up a, 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 that health crystal i was like especially in that it, it like it, I, again i'm not spoiling it but there is a fight that is like so dang cool that i was just like ah i'm so enjoying this i just don't want to die <laughs> so uh yeah I, i'm i i so i'm really super excited for for folks to be able to to, to play this and uh, um, is there any uh, any final words you want to give to the accessibility community uh, in, in regards to the uh, God of War Ragnarok? Uh, uh, feel free to to like the floor is yours. <laughs> Uh, I just want to say, you know, we we put a lot into this game. There's a lot in that menu to try out. I think go in, check it out, try out the different features. I think you'll be surprised at what uh, you know what things you find. Some of these things are really fun to use, and just in general, I think that they just enhance enhance the gameplay in a way that um, you know it's hard to kind of uh, quantify it because you take a game as broad and as big and epic as God of War Ragnarok. And you add in these features that just take a little bit of that pressure off of you in those situations in which we don't need the pressure and allow you to save that energy for these big frenetic combat uh, situations. And I think that that has been an eye opener for me from an accessibility standpoint is watching how you know players who maybe would struggle through the parts that we didn't want them to struggle through, right? Like we, you know, you just, we're just getting you to the to the point where you can get to the fight. That shouldn't be the main challenge. What we want to have the, the challenge is for for players to enjoy the story, to enjoy the combat, to enjoy these these puzzle moments. Uh, definitely, if you have any kind of uh, you know a difficulty with puzzles, we have awesome puzzle features that help you to kind of tune the way puzzles work. Uh, so definitely try that out. And man, there's so much to talk about. I could be here for hours, but I you know I want to say just take a look dive into it and uh see what's for see what works for you fantastic well mila thank you so much for uh, for joining me today um, again, congratulations on this uh, on this amazing work that you have done uh, over the past several years. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to what uh, people are going to be able to uh, play this uh, come uh, November 9th. Uh, it's, wow, it's literally kind of only a few a few days away at this point. So, yeah. um, so thank you so very much. Just around the corner. Looking yeah. forward to it. Thank you, Steve. <laughs> uh, it's been great talking to you. Look forward to hearing more of your thoughts on the game. Fantastic.